right behind me here is a newly planted bed of habanero peppers but just a few days ago it was a cover crop of winter rye and in this video i'm going to show you how to use winter rye cover crops as a sheet mulch in a no-till garden the winter rye crop behind me was uh planted in like mid-september the date today is april 30th it's very important that before you actually crimp the winter rye that it has these flower heads on it we want to crimp it before it forms a viable seed but it's still ready to die and that's how the plant will die easily by crimping and tarping otherwise the plant's just going to want to spring right back up and it's going to be hard to terminate basically so it grew all winter with no irrigation right next to this high tunnel and the reason i put it there is for erosion control basically and to kind of make the soil better in that area too that bed's just never really performed really great and then the water rushes off that high tunnel and kind of washes off these beds because the whole garden's on an incline this way and all my other beds go in this direction except for this high tunnel and these beds so the water usually rushes down the hill this way which works good in most of my garden but in this part of the garden it kind of causes problems wash out and so my thought is that I put a pause button on it for the winter help with erosion control keep the soil in place while at the same time bringing nutrients up from way deep down within the soil and then how I'm gonna crimp this helps build the soil up help with like wash out and stuff that I'm gonna have so to crimp it this is just like a standard t-post right nothing fancy it costs no money so this is just uh, leftover rope from when I bought the caterpillar tunnels I've got four greenhouses and they come with this rope to help hold the plastic down and there's always extra so it's great for little projects around the farm things like that so I'm literally just cutting off like an arm's length of this rope and then I'm gonna tie it around my teapot so I've got two lengths they're not quite exactly the same size but doesn't really matter. I'm going to tie them to the T-post first. So I just tie a loop in it. Like this. And then that makes it so that I can make a loop like this. And just kind of lasso that around my T-post. That's it. And then I'm going to do something similar on this end. And then that's it. And I'm just going to take this, like this. And that's it. And so now I'm just going to take the tool. I'm just going to step on it. I'm just going to crimp it right down to the ground. So the next step is to tarp it. And the, the wetter, the better. So if you can like run your irrigation over it first, or I'm just, since it's such a small little plot, I'm just going to water it with the hose. But you really want to like trap the moisture in under the tarp and that really helps like steam it to kill the cover crop if i were to just leave it like that it's just gonna spring right back up and keep growing i find that the tarping with this method like actually is necessary and then it can't just be like any tarp you don't want to like go to home depot and just pick up a tarp it has to be a silage tarp and then I always make the grass uh, facing one way. So then I can bring the, drag the tarp over it that way and I'm bringing it all this way. That way the grass doesn't get caught on it like going that way. Yeah, I just kind of like pieced together some tarps that I had laying around here. Greenhouse plastic left over from when I built the greenhouses to kind of get this end because it, you know, all my tarps are 50 feet long for my 50 foot long beds. But then when you crimp the cover crop, it sticks out like several feet so if you don't cover that somehow and get it to die it's just gonna like curl back up towards the sun in my experience all right so it's been about like 10 days i think that i crimped the winter rye last wednesday and today's thursday so it's been eight days it's interesting to see like at the other end like i put that little piece of pla uh, greenhouse plastic instead of silage tarp and that just turned brown like within a few days uh, I just kind of peeked under the tarp and it's still a little bit green. Um, it's not completely brown, but it's like kind of rotty smelling, you know, like it's dead. It's not coming back. Um, so I'd like to wait like another, I'd love to leave the tarp there for another week. But the truth is I got to go do deliveries all day tomorrow. I got two workers that are going to be here. They need something to do. I got pepper plants that are this tall that I need to get planted. So I just need to get plants in the ground, get these beds, making me money, keep my workers busy. So I'm just going to get this bed prepped and ready for them. Um, so I'm going to pull the tarps back and we'll see what it looks like. 
There you go, you can see that's what it looks like after about eight days. You can see it's all facing the same direction. It's, it's like straw, it's like mulching your garden with straw, only it was grown there and the roots are still in the ground. And then so I thought it was really interesting, like on this end, you can see how it's just like brown, brown, dead. So I had a little extra scrap piece of greenhouse plastic that I put right here. And that's the difference of like solarizing it or using the silage tarp. So if you got a piece of greenhouse plastic, I mean, you could, I mean, it looked like that after two days. So you could essentially tarp this with greenhouse plastic for two days, be done, build your beds and plant something else. There was a bed of arugula right next to it. And then it just so happened that we harvested that bed of arugula the same day as we crimped this cover crop. So we harvested the arugula, crimped the cover crop, and then just tarped both beds to terminate both beds. So now both beds are ready to be replanted. So I'm just gonna like measure out my beds. I, I use states with strings attached and I measure out the bed so I can keep straight lines. And I'm gonna freshen up all the wood chips along the side of the tunnel right here, put fresh compost right on top of this winter rye and then fresh compost on top of this uh, terminated arugula bed. And we're gonna plant peppers in both of these beds, I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna go ahead, get them measured out and get the beds rebuilt. So I just kind of like keep a few of these buckets around. And so I just grab the bucket, you know, it's got like a hammer in it, tape measure, and uh, a bunch of these things, just with string on them so I can string the beds up, measure them out and keep everything nice and straight. There's a few weeds I'm gonna go and hoe them out. You always wanna take care of any weeds now. You know, you don't want to ignore the weeds that are right here on the sides that you miss because those are just going to become big weeds, drop seeds, and then you're just going to have more weeds. You want to take care of that stuff now, and then you don't have to come back and weed this garden ever. The winter rye not only acts as a mulch, but it's got an aleopathic effect. So it mulches the soil, and then it inhibits weed seeds that might be in the soil from germinating for several weeks anyways. It last forever. But now I'm going to put compost right on top of that and then wood chips in the walkways and you don't necessarily have to put wood chips in the walkways you could just use the winter rye as a mulch but i just find it, it's like difficult to walk on so if you're going to walk in your walkways a lot you're going to slip on the winter rye but it does a great job at uh mulching the bed and then once i put compost on top of that like you're not going to get any weeds for the rest of the year on that bed okay so now that i put the compost down I'm gonna go ahead and like rake the compost smooth on the beds. And then once that's nice and tight, then I come back in and I fill in kind of the gap with wood chips and it just kind of like fills the raised bed kind of nicely, you know? And like I, how I showed you how I crimp it all in one direction on purpose, like I really messed it up by going this way with the wheelbarrow. You can see how like by stepping on it and walking that way with it, it like I like kicked it up so I'm gonna try to fix that the best I can so I was out doing my deliveries today and I had Max and Katie my workers uh, finish this in with filling it in with wood chips so uh, I told them that we'll harvest this bed of Salanova lettuce next week and then we'll uh, fill in the wood chips right there and then we'll probably freshen up that whole big uh, little walkway right there but um so this is what it looks like when we're done right you can't even tell that there's a cover crop under there so I just built the garden right on top of the sheet mulch cover crop so I'll show you what it looks like <laughs> 